Happy Monday, everybody. Happy Monday, 29 of May, 2017. Excited for today's webinar because we're going to be talking about the future. We're going to be talking about, you know, ideas and brainstorming how to improve the product, how to improve our desktop, our mobile, how to our app that's going to come down the road, other features. Today is wish list time. We're going to be creating a wish list of stuff that we want to add because we are growing our product team. We're adding, we're hiring a designer who specializes in user experience and user interface for the desktop and mobile. We are hiring more developers. All right, because we've grown so much, all right, because of you, because of, you know, your testimonials, your results. Uh, your positive feedback with your peers. Um, we've grown a ton uh, the last couple months. And so every single time we grow, we have more resources to play with to continue to push the product forward. Like this isn't even going to be a linear growth. There's going to be exponential growth, right? Like startup companies are going like this. And this is the exciting part that you guys are a part of is if you help us go up faster, then your product grows faster. We can hire more people. Um, and, uh, and that means you, by, by you locking in your price and getting grandfathered in, you know, you're getting so much more bang for your buck, right? So when I, when I first started this in Toronto and I was telling realtors the vision, I was like, listen, like you guys are getting in literally at the ground. We haven't even built the site yet, but I have this idea and you come in now, the price of the neighborhood websites range from two to $4,000 at the very beginning. Um, now, now, now they're, you know, four five, six, eight thousand dollars ten thousand dollars sometimes you know per site and that's still going to be an amazing deal when 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 we talk about some of the features that are coming and what you guys are all going to get um already like what's already going to happen the whatever you're paying on a yearly basis we are literally going to be the best investment you ever make in your business i know it and then i'm excited today to just get some more feedback, get some more ideas and start talking about, you know, improving. And I've got some, some questions to ask because there are some features that there's a little bit of a divide here, whether, whether we want to add it to Park Bench. So this could be a pivotal mastermind session where you help us determine yay or nay be, be uh, you know around adding some features so we're gonna get started in a couple minutes okay we're gonna let people get on if you're on say hello in the chat box okay let everyone know who you are where you do business and right off the bat I want to hear one new feature that you would like us to add so today we're going to get super – like I'm going to be asking questions, okay, and, and, uh, and I want everyone to get active in the site. All right, Upen, my man, how you doing? All right, mortgage brokers, people who are mortgage brokers and lenders and, and, and other industries who have sponsored um, the, the neighborhood website. We've, we're already working on – a specific profile for mortgage brokers and lenders. All right, so definitely throw in throw in your ideas. Although, Upen, I know you talked with Amanda about your wish list, and uh, we're pretty much going to be able to do all of it in due time. Um, let me pull. So I got some notes on stuff that we're doing. So I know for for mortgage brokers, the people who who's who, you know. It, there are some areas where we don't have realtors. We've got mortgage brokers. We've got lenders. Okay, so we're definitely adding like the free quote, you know, piece, right? There's a huge lead generation um, industry around mortgage where it's like, hey, get a free quote, enter information for a free quote. So we've looked at um, all the different, you know, designs for that. Um, we'll also be adding a rate section.
think so. Hello. Hello. All right. I think I'm back on, everybody. Everyone, let me know if you can see and hear me. Man, internet. Luckily, we have two offices now in the same building. So I was able to run downstairs to the second office to get back on this webinar. I'm very sorry, everybody. Um, we're back on. Awesome. All right. Well, let's get into it. Okay. So, all right. Uh, now, if anyone has any questions, so although today's theme is going to be on, you know, new features, talking about the app, talking about improvements, um, if you have any questions that you want to ask, you know, about any part, I can I can do a, a screen share and uh, we can get into it. So just let me know uh, if you have uh, any specific questions you want me to get into. Otherwise, I want to talk about the future. Okay, so um, right before I got cut off, I was, ta I was, I was talking about how for all the sponsors that we have who are non-realtors, who are mortgage brokers, who are lenders, um, and other industries that we have who have sponsored the site, we are adding, like we're going to be, when you log in, you're going to see completely different stuff than realtors. Right now, it's you see the same thing as all of our realtor sponsors, and soon you're going to have a completely different uh, section than the realtors. Um, so if you have, so this is what I talked about, because I'll get, uh, the. this is what we are planning on doing already, and then we're going to get in total brainstorm new stuff, is you're going to have a lead generation section that's different, obviously, than realtors, because, you know, you're not going to be giving people, you know, home valuations, you're going to be giving them quotes, all right, mortgage quotes, so we're definitely going to have that in there. We're going to have a rate section so you can put lots of different tables for all the variable rates and fixed rates you guys got. Then there's a section where you people can you can upload applications and documents because I know that that's you know something that um, a lot of mortgage ex a lot of mortgage and lending people want to do is say hey if you want to apply here's a bunch of different forms to fill out. Then you may have a market report um, and calculators. So there's going to be different sections just like a realtor has got. Featured listings, search properties, testimonials under their profile, um, you know, and uh, you'll have a calculator section, a market report section, an application section, and a rate section. So if we got any lenders and mortgage people on the call, which I know, Upen, uh, I know you are, if you have any ideas of other features that you want to see us add um, to your profile, please put that in the chat box. Okay, um, but I want to get into talking about the app. Okay, so again, I don't know if some of you came on a little bit later. We're hiring an expert at user experience and user interfaces, right? Someone who's going to redesign the, the website and design the app. And we're building out our development team to develop an app on iOS uh, and then it'll be Android. Um, so we're super excited about a, about the growth. And and once again, it's a reminder that the bigger we get, right, the better this platform is going to be. The better the SEO is going to be. The better, the more features you all going to get. And because you've locked in your price, are right, you guys are all grandfathered in? So the bigger we get, the faster we grow, the better ROI you will get. So that's why I encourage clients. From day one, when I used to walk around Toronto and travel around the country to find partners and sponsors for the neighborhood, I said, hey, help me grow and I will reinvest in you. I promise I will take your money and I will reinvest in you. I will reinvest in the product. I, I am young. I don't need to make a ton of money right now. So I'm willing to delay my gratification to create the best marketing platform, the best marketing service for you. So help me grow. I'll give you money off your renewal. Um, and you're just going to see the product accelerate. Okay. So that's a reminder to everybody is if you ha know anyone who would love our platform, love our technology, and everyone who doesn't love their coaches, okay, 
If you love your coaches, say yes, I love my coaches in the chat box. Um, if you love your coaches, then you probably know people who could use someone like the coaches that you have to do and help and become like a mini assistant and coach for your business, and, you know, and marketing advisor for your business. So if you know anyone, definitely refer. You'll get money off your renewal. Okay. And we're going to accelerate the development of this product. Um, so the first thing I want to do is I want to get into the app. Okay. So, you know, on the, on the grand scheme of things, we're kind of just taking the website and turning into an app because it will function faster. It will look better when it's an app for the neighborhood, right? So you imagine someone just um, opens up their phone, they click on the park bench app, and then, and then it'll be like stuff will show up on the home screen, okay? Now, when someone logs in the park bench app, it'll geolocate them. We'll just say, you're in this neighborhood. What do you want to know about? Deals, events, news, interviews? You know, do you want to read blogs? Do you want to look at a real estate expert, you know, or mortgage expert in the community? Photo gallery, homes for sale, if there is content. So I'll get to that in a second. All right. So the same stuff we already have on the website will show up in this app. So really big picture. What other content do you think we should be adding? Right? What other content do you think we should add to the website and the app? Like to the neighborhood site as a whole, you got deals and sales and specials and coupons. That's, that's a, a, a unit. You've got events. Then you've got news articles. And you've got interviews and blogs. And you've got information about you, the expert in real estate. You've got, you know, a photo gallery is going to start developing. That's going to be one of the cool things about the app is, is, is users and yourself are going to be very easily able to walk around the community and take photos and post it to the website. It's going to be one of the coolest features um, is the, is, of the app is the ability to very quickly take photos and add it to the website, add it to the photo gallery and, and make a post out of it. Um, there's going to be, you know, a homes for sale section. That means if you add listings, okay? So for all of you who are on the call who have not actually manually added listings to your profile, when we have a homes for sale section on the app, it won't appear on when, when people are in your area because you did not add any listings. So that is some content that we wanna add. All right, and now I'm just getting some other stuff here. Community involvement. All right, so Matt, expand, expand on that for me. Like, what kind of information about community involvement do you want to have on the website and about the community? Okay, um, it's an interesting point, right? Instead of realtor lender, how about your community sponsor? We used to have that uh, in back in the day, and then a bunch of realtors voted against that. Um, Plus, when it comes to SEO, we want to actually have specific wording to everybody. And that's why we went with real estate professional. And then we'll have a specific one. So for you and for everyone else, mortgage lender um, or mortgage broker. Okay. So what, what, what you know, Connie brings up, which is actually going to be one of the definitely dis the discussions I want to talk to you guys today on. And I'll, and I'll maybe even do a poll. I'll do a poll right now, okay? Um, should we, okay, so, so in the States, should we add the List Hub? This is the only way, the only way we are going to be able to have properties on the site just like, you know, just like on your website or 
just like Zillow and Realtor.com, the only way we're going to have properties automatically upload on the site and stay up to date so that you don't have to manually add the listings and so that we can have this as data so that so that all these properties are pages on the site that jack the SEO up, okay, um, is if we buy, this is the benefit of having a big network of realtors, we can now afford, because it's expensive, um, buy list hub property data and build a real estate search portal. Okay, so this is a, this is a, this is a huge move. Should we add List Hub and build a real estate portal? Now, before I put this poll out, yes or no, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the pros and cons of this um, because Zillow does not tell you probably, you're probably not uh, aware of some of the legalities around having the data. So. Here's here is some of the right because we could not we are we are not allowed to become an IDX vendor. Okay, we do not we are not allowed to be an IDX vendor in some areas. Some places will allow Park Bench to become an IDX vendor because you know your subdomain on Park Bench is like your own website and you are building it for a realtor. Right, the person who has exclusivity, we're building it for you. But some some areas do not let us become an IDX vendor because we're a third party website. Whereas List Hub uh, does, um, we can buy their data. So here's one of the disadvantages: is um, List Hub is only American; it's not Canadian. So for all the Americans here, that doesn't impact you at all. But all the Canadians, we do not know, and and, and the Canadian market. So, so like the park bench would have real estate search portal on the American side and not on the Canadian side. That's a small thing. Um, here's the other thing to think about. Uh, and you may not know this by law, by law, if we, when, when any company buys list hub data, you must, you must showcase the listing agent equally to the advertised the people who pay to advertise on the portal right so this is why when you go on zillow and realtor.com who also have list up data the the listing agent is at the top of the people to call and then the realtors who advertise are below that so um it would just be you right like you have exclusivity to your area but we have to by law advertise the listing agent and 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 this may not be a big deal because apparently this is the the, the, the norm so some of you may know may know this but i know some people don't by law when leads are generated through the portal because that's one of the advantages of the portal is like there's going to be lots of pages about properties on the site our seo is going to go up T engagement on the site is going to go up People are going to search for homes on the site, just like a portal. And, and we're going to be able to design like the best, like that's the goal is to create the best search experience on the internet for properties, right? By looking at all the different websites out there and create something that is the best, like on par or better than Zillow and Realtor.com. You know, so people will be searching for properties on your neighborhood site. Um, and, uh, and, and, and for sure leads will be generated, right? Like, there's those three questions on the side of the page on your site, and now this would be another way to generate leads. And and I hear realtors com complain, you know, that that when you generate leads through these portals, sometimes you call the the lead and someone else has already called them, and that's because by law, even if you bought exclusivity on Zillow to your zip code to get all the leads on Zillow on the zip code. Whether they tell you this or not, by law, they are also sending the lead to the listing agent. They are also sending, the law is 
Parkbench, if we buy List Hub data and leads are generated, we would give the lead to the realtor who's got exclusivity to that area. But we would also have to send the lead to the listing agent. And, that, and that's something that we cannot escape. And I tried debating and saying I'll pay more to not have to do that. And they were like, no, you can't do that. So we would have to send the lead to the listing agent. And some of you may be like, I, I already know that. Um, but some of you may not. Um, and that is one of the, one of the, the questions I want to ask is now knowing that, okay, so like advantage, more pages of content, better SEO, more user engagement, leads could be generated. You have exclusivity on a search portal online, um, automatically adds listings for you. So you don't have to do it anymore. Um, you know, it's almost, it really, it really turns into like a mini website for you. Okay, so pros, con is, you know, a listing agent will be advertised on the portal. The listing agent for every property will be advertised. And when leads are generated, it goes to that listing agent. So I'm going to pull out a poll right now. Should we add and buy List Hub data and build a real estate portal on the site? Because then on the app and on the desktop, we will be able to have a real estate search for people who use it. Okay, so I'm going to start this poll. All right, I want you guys to answer it um, because th this is a big investment for us, right? And some people go, you know, no, if if I don't want, I, I want to direct people to my website, right? The argument is if people want to search for properties, you know, let's have a link in my profile, direct people there. My sidebar ad can direct there. You know, you know, I want people to search for properties on my own website. Um, you know, and I don't want to, and, and if, and if people search for properties on my website, which is an IDX provider, I don't have to send the lead to the listing agent. Um, right. That's part of the, the rub is, is other companies who are IDX providers don't have to do that, but we can't become an IDX provider in every city and every state around the North America. The only solution we have is to buy the data from list hub. And so, the upside is, you know, we're going to have a great search portal. SEO is going to go up. User engagement, time on site, leads generated through the site will go up. Um, all these cool benefits, but because we're doing it through List Hub, we have to send the listing agent the lead. So Zillow gets around it. Real talk. Every other company in this world who buys List Hub data you know, has to do the same thing. So I was thinking it might not be that big of a deal. I think you guys kind of already knew that maybe. Okay. Um, yes, we are becoming a, a preferred vendor for Keller Williams, you know, and for some other brokerages. We already have all the documents. We got the slide deck. We got the testimonials. We got the reference letters. Cheryl, thank you very much for doing that. Um, but as I understood it from them, that doesn't mean I get the properties or like a live feed. Um, so in order for us to have a feed of all the properties or a lot of properties, um, we have to, we have to buy list hub. Okay. Okay. So good feedback. All right. Now an honest this question from Connie, what do you believe park Bench's mission is? I will get to that in a sec. That's a very good question. That's a good question. Okay, I'm going to close this poll. Whoa. We're going to have to do this one again. We are 50-50. Jesus, that was totally unhelpful. <laughs> that did not help me at all, guys. 50-50, <laughs> yes or no. Put your, put your opinions. Okay, this is a great – I mean, maybe this is great. Write your reasons why you said yes or no to, to adding, you know, Real, to buying List Hub and creating a real estate portal on the site. This is great. <laughs> but put your reasoning. Say say no hyphen and my reason why or yes hyphen and my reason why. Um, you know, and, and and yes, like it is a small group, right? So so we'll we'll send a survey out to everybody in the network. Okay. But it was good, it was good to give everyone's you know feedback. Okay. Because it, what ties is 
like the overall purpose of Park Bench. Like, what is Park Bench? Like, what is our mission? Okay. And, and where Park Bench is moving towards is we want to be a local search engine. Right. That is what Park Bench is a local search engine, which otherwise becomes the neighborhood news source. If you want to know stuff about neighborhoods, go to Park Bench. That's the ultimate goal. Everything there is to know about neighborhoods, Park Bench. And so all the people who sponsor benefit if we really do become that massive player from a user perspective. So lead generation is secondary. Like the point of sponsoring a neighborhood site isn't to generate online leads. It's to have something to build relationships with, to build your database with, to build your sphere of influence with, and to talk to people so that you can ask them if and when they're moving, right? Or you can prospect them. Have something to prospect because prospecting is the best. Now, if you end up having a website that lots of people go to and there's lead generation capabilities, hey, that just adds more value. That just accelerates the results for all the sponsors. And that's the reason why we're always looking for a way to add online lead gener generation capabilities. Because if we can, and if we end up becoming the go-to source for local news and the local search engine and become like as big as Yelp and Eventbrite and Google and stuff for neighborhoods, then we definitely should be generating leads to the site for our sponsors. Um, so that is like, you know, and if I was to, to, to make a mission statement, you know, like a nice fluffy mission statement, um, it really is to make neighborhoods stronger. You know, if I simply Park Bench, our mission is to be the most neighborhood centric company in the world. That's like a company's mission. But like a purpose is let's make neighborhoods stronger economically by helping the small businesses and professionals. Let's make it better socially by educating people about what's going on around them so they can have more fun. Um, and, you know, I, we, I think there's some we've we've played around and researched some ideas about how we can help the environment, you know. And I think just if people are more aware, you know, um, about about their neighborhoods, they care more about their neighborhoods. There's a more identity around their neighborhood that they live in and work in. Then, you know, the environment, you know, will improve within the neighborhood. But even just economically and socially, right? Money and and fun, money and people, right? Lifestyle, quality of life, and and money. Okay. So, you know, what, what, Connie, what Connie brings up, right, depends on your mission. It, it, our mission as a website, right, when people go to your park bench sites, they don't, if, if they thought that the reason why park bench existed was to help realtors make money, then they would never use it and promote it. Right, like, like that's the reality, guys. If 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 our mission as a company that we broadcast to everybody in the world is to help realtors make money, then no one's going to use the site and no one's going to promote the site. What our mission to you guys is to help you make way more money than you spend, and to help you build a big business, a hundred percent. But like Park Bench, if you were to ever convey the message of Park Bench exists to help me make more money and build my business and bear, bear my spell of, uh, sphere of influence. I'm going to make a bet that you will not succeed because no one cares about that except you and us. So that's why when I say that mission, it has nothing to do with you guys. Um, it has everything to do with a mission that makes people want to use the site and promote the site. Okay. So, great engagement, everybody here. Okay, so so Matt had something. Right. So, when, if, if the goal is to become the digital mayor of your area, then the better the SEO, 
Okay. Now, if you guys are the digital mayor, that means, one, everyone knows you and likes you and trusts you. But the digital mayor part is it's online and offline. In order for people to know you, you got to show up a lot when people are searching. So Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So sending sending, uh, sending the lead to the listing agent as well as you. And, and, and List Hub obviously says the listing agents don't talk, don't call the leads, apparently. Okay. Right. So, so here's, so this is a good point for everyone who's reading what Connie wrote. Okay. So yes, every realtor, every sponsor buys Park Bench to build their database, build their sphere of influence, give value to people. All right, have a reason to go talk to people, get to know them through the interview system, and then doing that because you guys are also such awesome people, you ended up building your business, building a great brand, reputation, um, and so forth. Now, because you live in a major metro area, it's complicated to get people to understand Park Bench. This is what Connie, Connie wrote. What that's... If if so here so here's the deal, and this is the thing about about uh, neighborhood websites that when when there's very few companies out there, if any at all, there's nothing like us. There's Nextdoor, which builds neighborhood websites. Okay, because the unit is a neighborhood website, it doesn't matter if there's other neighborhood websites in your major metro area. So, so the analogy goes, if, if this was a city-based website, right? So if, if I bought the rights to Toronto, no one would say, well, it's, it's tougher for me to get Toronto, my Toronto site built because there aren't sponsors for Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, and Ottawa, which is around Toronto. No one would ever say that because they're separate cities. Even if it's the city next door, even if I'm in L.A. and I say, hey, it's hard for me to get my L.A. site going because there's, there's not a, a San Diego site and an Orange County site. It would be like, no, that's irrelevant. You know, like even like they're, they're totally separate. They're totally far apart. So for you guys, you have your own neighborhood sites. Even if the neighborhoods next door and the other neighborhoods in your city aren't sponsored, or even if they are, and it's and it's just a big, really big city, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that yours grows, because all the other sites in the network, even if they're not close by, will still help yours, right? We got we got Jimmy Dixon in the North Pole. If he's killing it, that's helping. You know, Candace Story, who's in Alpharetta, Georgia, and that's helping. You know. Rachel in Solana Beach, and that's helping Upin in DC, right? Like everybody's a part of a network. So as long as your area is growing, it'll work. And because it's a neighborhood website, that's the reason why Facebook grew so fast, okay? You should be able to get the, – the easiest way to get engagement for anything is in a smaller area. So – Hopefully you didn't buy too much. Okay, hopefully you bought an area that's manageable because that makes it easier to get lots of people engaged by having a smaller area, right? Facebook grew campus by campus, right? We grow neighborhood by neighborhood. And as long as someone your neighborhood's succeeding, then your neighborhood park bench will succeed. Even if the guy next door's neighborhood's crumbling, but someone else is succeeding somewhere else in the world, hey, now you guys are helping each other. Okay, so um, good feedback on, on uh, we'll send a different, another survey out of this list hub. I want to move on to something else, okay, because there's a lot other, a lot more topics we can talk about with regards to the app, you know, and just features of the website. Okay, so, and, and really like the reason why we're, we're putting out this app is we just want more people and businesses to use Park Bench. 
right? Like, it's a sl- everyone knows it's a long term strategy. Everyone knows that local sites take time to build, you know, and no one ever, you know, it took me time and it takes everybody time to get lots of users and engagement. But we're still obviously trying to make efforts to make this thing speed up. So the goal of the app is to get more people using Parkbench and get more businesses using it. And by using it, I mean either consuming the content on the site or creating content. And that's where the app's really going to come in is helping people create content on the site. And, and like I said, at the end of the day, it's like we're trying to be the neighborhood news source. You're the sponsor for the neighborhood news source, the local search engine that has more local content than anybody else, and we're constantly trying to improve the experience so that more people want to use it. So when you think about features, like imagine using your site. Imagine your friends using your site, your family, yourself. When you think about the features that you would want to see that aren't in place right now, that maybe you've seen on other apps that are cool, what are they? So put some of your ideas in the chat box, and I'm going to outline some stuff that um, we've got. So it's going to be really easy for people to make posts in the community. Then people want to like and comment and share content. Right, there you go. So great job, Sharon. Right, you took the words out of my mouth. Okay, so it's going to be just like you can share stuff really easy on Facebook. We're going to make it just like Facebook. You can like, comment, and share feed items, whether it be an event or deal or news article. So whenever new deals happen, I want to be notified. Or here are the neighborhoods that I want to be notified about when new listings go up in these neighborhoods. Or, hey, I want to follow a specific business. So anytime they create content, no matter what the content is, or if they edit their profile, I want to know. It's my favorite business in the neighborhood. I want to know. Applications, where is it? What's going on here? What? Okay, I've lost my my notes. There we go. Weird. Oh. Okay, so um, what other... It's like disappeared. Okay. Um, The other, you know, features for users is... One, they want to, like like some businesses may never put up deal sales specials because they're super old school. But why can't users just walk around the neighborhood and say, hey, look at this sandwich board. It says all these deals are happening and let people know. Hey, there's a sale going on at this store. I see the red tag. Take a picture and upload the deal to let people know about it. And then what's going to happen is you guys create lots of photos and videos. We're going to be able to allow, like the thing that the app's going to do is you're going to be able to upload videos really easily to the app and to the whole site. So if you walk around the neighborhood, something's going on, you're at your open house, you're at your client's property, you're at an event, you're just walking through the neighborhood, you could take photos or 
you can then take a video. And then what we're doing is we're going to be able to link link the video to your YouTube so the content goes on Parkbench and it goes on your YouTube. It's also because we got to save some money, so I don't have to spend money, spend your money on video storage. But that's going to be coming soon. That's going to be able to be possible in the app. Okay, so let me read some of the other. So what do you guys think? What kind of, yeah, Parkbench Live. So um, live's very difficult uh, because there's got to be a massive audience. You know, like there's a lot of people who are pushing live, like Facebook Live for realtors. And I think it's over-promoted personally for realtors because most most realtors don't have an audience large enough so that when they do live, people actually watch it. Um, because only a percentage of your audience will get notified when you do live who then come to the live. So if your audience is really tiny, which most realtors' audiences are tiny, then live is a waste of time. Um, people talk about it a lot because it's the new latest and greatest thing, you know, but until, until the users and the traffic and the, and the subscriber, email subscribers are so big, um, we probably won't, we probably won't do live, but we will do video. We will do video. Um, ability for users to recommend their favorite business or even allow users to do an interview and provide the input to the sponsor. So that brings up a great question that we should uh, we should do a new poll for. And this has been something I'm thinking of. Should we allow users to do interviews? Yes or no? Now, to some extent, like people can add content, they can add blog posts. If you go to your site, you know, you can go add uh, you know, content and they could just Write an write an article about something. They could they could already tech, kind of technically do an interviews, but we don't give them the same kind of interview setup as you guys have. And so that's the question: is should we, you know, make inter should we allow users to do interviews? Should we make it easy for them to do interviews of things just like you? That is a debate. Um, so I've just launched a poll. Okay, put your stuff in there. You know, um, you know. The obvious, the obvious thing is, hey, these are my interviews. I want to do them. You know, if they do them, then I can't do them. Okay. Now the flip side is, you know, if even if you just did interviews and you wanted to interview someone again or see someone again, you know, uh, we can we can teach you how to do subsequent interviews like there's there's always a reason to interview people there's always different questions you can ask there's always different different stuff you can talk about so so even if you even if a user did an interview that doesn't stop you from doing one with that same person it doesn't stop you from building a relationship it might just benefit you because now you're giving people more reasons to use your site um, which then makes you the digital mayor because they're using the go-to site to publish content to interviews with and if it's yours you know, you win. So um, that's that's the flip side. Is is there's always other reasons to do interviews. So you can meet someone, even if they were met by someone else in the neighborhood, and by them doing it, they're just boosting the SEO of the site. They're just using the site more. They're just seeing you more often. You're just building yourself up in the neighborhood because exclusivity is not going away. Right, and if exclusivity is never going away, if you guys are always the only realtor on the site, then don't isn't the goal just to have as many people, you know, subscribe and use the site as possible? Because then your database is just growing, 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 and then you just start working through those users on the site to interview them at the pace that you go with, right? Um, so let's take a look. So having local questions. All right, so Connie says, having local questions, having sponsoring realtors help neighbors find out answers to local questions. You know, so so if you if you log in your back end, you'll see there's a section under the interview templates called best of, right? Best of templates. 
And so this is a chance for you to then give some education to the community of best restaurants, best coffee shops, best patios, best schools, you know, top whatever. Um, and that gives people answers because these are the things that people usually ask when they move to an area. What are the best so-and-so? All right, Cheryl go, so Cheryl says, I think encouraging anyone to use and promote Park Bench, our neighborhood thing, is a positive, right? So, so yes, that is the stance, right? Encouraging people to use the site. If, if interviewing people is that thing that makes people just all of a sudden flock to the site, hey, you know, that's not a bad thing. Okay. So, um, ooh, that's an interesting thing, what Barbara says, is maybe the users tell the realtor, hey, you should interview this business. Because there's that button that says apply to be interviewed, but what if you nominate someone to be interviewed. What a great idea, Barbara. No, I hope that's what you mean. <laughs> Nominate someone to be interviewed. All right, I'm taking a note there. That's a good one. Okay. Should businesses, that's another good one. Should businesses be able to do their own polls? So, that, so should we allow users to do interviews? 80% of you said yes. Great job. All right, let's do another one. Should we allow businesses to do their own interviews. Okay, I personally am a big fat no to this one, but you guys may disagree with me. Okay, should businesses, should we allow them just to fill out the interview form on their own? I personally think no, because um, that's the whole point is that you meet them. You meet them. There's a reason for you to meet them, to fill it out. Right, to ask them the questions, to get the answers, because if they do it, then you don't get to do that with them. And that's time to build a relationship. That's time to get to know them, because you, because you don't even know what questions you may want to ask them based on the answers they give. So I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big no to that one. But if you guys disagree, hey, I'm open. This is, this is all for you guys. Okay. Um, all right. So. Upen says it depends if we should allow people to do interviews. Right? And, and, and yes, on the app and on the desktop, if there's any piece of content that you do not like, you will be able to delete it. If a user makes a post, a blog post, an interview, adds a photo, adds a video, anything, anything that you guys don't like, you will have admin access to delete off the site. Okay. In the United States, realtors are not allowed to recommend schools. Really? I did not know that. You couldn't write a blog. You must be able to write a blog. You're not recommending them. You're just you're just talking about them. You must be allowed to do a blog. blogs about schools because that's huge drivers to real estate okay and and cheryl asked can we still have our support people remove inappropriate content yeah so so you have control to remove content but if you know if you're out and about or something like that then you can you can x you can email support and tell them to take something down okay So businesses can request to be interviewed on the site. You can look on the look on the side of, the, um, but that nomination one was a really cool idea. All right, let's check out the poll. No, hundred percent, no, awesome. All right. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. So, let me. Uh, before, all right. You know, when, when you, when you, <laughs> when you, um, 
when you look at next door, okay, you know, there's definitely stuff that could be learned from next door, the neighborhood website. So when you look at next door, uh, and you look at some of the issues that they're having because they're opening up the chat box, right? It, it's, it's a message board for the neighborhood. And there's a lot of crap, for lack of a better word, that gets posted. A lot of just stupid stuff. They're having huge racial issues and discriminatory stuff um, and just, you know, nonsense uh, written on these message boards. Should there be a classified section? So a specific section for classifieds. This one's tough to get off the ground because um, there's got to be people on the site, you know, to post stuff that they want to buy or stuff they want to sell, stuff they want to share or trade. Um, and, you know, there's got to be enough people to go there to make to, to actually say yes or no and buy it or don't buy it, trade with the person. Because if, if a person goes on there, if there's a classified section, they go on there, they, they put their couch up for sale. And then, you know, there's no likes, there's no comments, there's no shares, there's no bites. Then they'll never do it again, probably, right? They'll just be like, yeah, you know, screw the site for classifieds. So it's definitely something that in the future, I think, could be added unless people are just emphatically like, no, you know, don't do classifieds ever. So just in the chat box, we'll move on to another topic. But I'd love to just get your two cents on classifieds. Um. Let me ask you this, because this, this, is this is something that will require a lot of work. I have to go get a charger for my phone, for my computer. Can you see yourself ever using the app to upload an interview? All right, can you ever, should we spend a lot of time and therefore money, and that means your money, to building an experience so that uh, you can upload your interviews on the app. So you'll be able to take photos and post it to the site. You'll be able to do, sh you know, short videos and add it to the site. Should we also build, okay, an experience so that you can do inner, you can upload your interview on the app or will you just use desktop? You know, will, will you just log on to a computer later to uh, to finish the interview? Sorry, one sec. Will I? When I have to change offices, I didn't get a. I left my charging station. Oh man, this is the wrong charger. God damn it! All right, so let me know if you would put. Can I borrow this for a sec? All right, desktop, desktop, anyone else? Anyone say yes to wanting to write up their interview on their phone? Let me know. So, so, <laughs> so, so, so Cheryl, what Cheryl's saying is, yeah, like, is it super, if it's easy to navigate, right? Like, so that's the thing is we would invest time to develop an easy to use as easy as it could be right like as easy as it could be way to do the interview on the phone all right i'll do a poll I'll, I'll do a poll here you know should we invest time and money to allow you to do do your interviews on the app Yes, no. Okay.
We are back. All right. Hope you guys can hear me. If you can hear me. So here's a good one. Here's a good one. When people click on, right, so they open up the app and it's going to say real estate expert, okay, and you click on real estate expert and then your profile show up, right? So when someone opens up the app, says you're in blah, blah, blah neighborhood, you know, what do you want to know about? And they click on real estate expert. If they click on that. Because when someone clicks on real estate expert, the idea is hopefully they want to contact you. And uh, that's the reason why they're clicking on it. So what information do you think is imperative to have uh, on your real estate profile? Okay, so so we're thinking for the profile. All right, what we do is we showcase your picture, your contact information, so they can they can click a button and you can call you, click a button and email you, click a button and message you through the platform. Have a picture. Okay, the the properties will have its own section, right? So you go to the home page of the app, it'll say real estate expert homes for sale. So there'll be two different sections, one for the properties and one for you. So we're going to show that on another thing. So then we have to decide whether we're going to show your bio, show team information, show testimonials, show awards, designations, because to 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 generate leads, to get people to contact you, which is probably why they're clicking on, I want to talk to a real estate expert. We could just show your picture, your contact information, where they can click on that to contact you right away through the phone. And then below that, other lead generation questions like, hey, find out what your home find out what your home is worth. Hey, get a recently sold report. Hey, get notified when new homes go on sale. And that becomes a button they can click and then they'll contact you. You'll get a lead. Um, and 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 now that person's you know getting something. And then then it's like, hey, do we want to add other stuff, right? So for sure, we want to have picture. For sure, we want to have contact information. For sure, we want to have lead generation questions because there's lots of ways that you can generate leads by having con different forms of contact and different lead generation questions. Then the question is, should people be able to review you there? Do you want to have reviews on the app? Because people can review you on your profile. Should people be able to read those reviews on the app? Should we show the testimonials? The issue with the testimonials is you guys all upload text. So um, again, it, it would just be like text, reading text. Um, so the question is, do we include testimonials? Do we include reviews? Can people review you on the app? All right, so I'm... I'm uh, let me know yes or no to testimonials, yes or no to reviews, yes or no to bio, because some people said I include a bio, which is great feedback. Okay. I think what we can do is we can probably just enhance, you know, look at, you know. Um, yeah, so great question, Cheryl. Um, yeah, one of the basic functionalities of um, the app is that people can write reviews, okay, um, about you and about, you know, the neighborhood. They can learn about the neighborhood and review the neighborhood. But 
we don't necessarily want to add a business directory. So here's here will be the here was one of the different questions. I'm going to have a poll there. Do we want to have the business directory where people can find search for businesses and write write and read reviews about businesses, or do we want to tell the businesses and the professionals that you only get to be on the app if you add a deal, or if you add events, or if you add news, or if you add a blog, or if you get interviewed? The only way to be present on the app is if you actually create great content, useful content about, you know, your business. Because, you know, Yellow Pages exist, Yelp exists, Google Apps, Google Maps um, exists, right? Like, I'm pretty realistic in the sense of, hey, like, I use Google App, I use Google Maps, and I use Yelp to find stuff when I'm traveling in the States. If I'm in Vancouver, if I just want a directory, yeah, I'm just going to use Google Maps, you know, or Yelp. But they don't have deals. They don't have events. They don't have news. They don't have blogs. They don't have interviews. And that's what differentiates us and you from those guys. And that way it almost – it's like free for them. But hey, if you want to be on the app, you got to put up a deal or put up an event or put up a blog or be interviewed. And so then we don't worry about it being a reviews app, right? People can review you, and that's why we, we may not want to have reviews for the realtor. Maybe you just have your buy and your testimonials, and maybe no one gets to review anything. Maybe that's not the purpose of the app is to review things. The purpose of the app is to get deals, look at events, read news, look at properties, contact a realtor. Upload photos, upload videos, upload blogs, you know, post a deal you see in the neighborhood, post a sale, post a picture of an event happening in the neighborhood at that moment. Okay. Um, so I'm going to put, I'm going to put that should, I'm going to create a poll. Okay. Should we add a business directory? and reviews to the app. Yes, no. Start the poll. Okay. Um, Cheryl asked a good question. My biggest challenge is getting the business designer of you to post on their web page. So, Cheryl, step one, um, a new service that we are adding to Right, I'm, I'm, the coaches are starting to do once they get through the basics of the onboarding. One of the things that coaches will do with clients who have been around for months or maybe in their second year and third year, okay, is helping you get the ball rolling with getting businesses to use the site more, put up deals, hand out cards. Okay, so talk to your account manager about helping get the businesses that you've interviewed to start using the platform more. And we've even got a template email that you can use to get them to promote their interview on their social media. Um, so, you know, one, if you're talking about how do I get these people to promote the interview after I do it, in the interview is where you get their buy-in to promoting it. Because you're like, hey, I'm going to promote it. So you're going to promote this after, right, too? Okay, so in the interview, I'll always get their verbal buy-in to promote the interview. Then we send it to them once it's done. Um, and then if you, a week later, notice they haven't done it yet, then we have a template that you can use to send it out. We're pretty much, it's just like, hey, you know, um, I just want to let you know, I shared the interview. Here's a screenshot of my Facebook. I shared it on social media. I noticed you haven't yet. Okay. Um, and And, you know, the facts are, when both of us share it, more people go there, more people engage with your brand, more people read about you, and that's going to drive more brand engagement and sales. Um, so I highly recommend you do it. Share it on social media. Your fans and friends will reshare it. No comment about it. Here's the link again. Um, you know, have a great day. All right. So you you show them that you did it, which makes them want to reciprocate 
and do it, especially when you also back it up with logic and stats that, you know, they benefit by doing this. Okay. Cause, cause man, you guys, once you guys get, once you crack the code, right. Interviews is, and you probably already got this with interviews is once you get the interview down pat, like it's easy to do it again and again and again. Right. It's, it's, it's kind of just like a new skill that once you figure out, you know, it's always easy to book them. It's always easy to do them. The next skill, once you figure this out, one, you'll know how to do it forever and ever. Okay. It's just like interviews. And two, man, this is going to get you addicted uh, to building your park bench uh, as it did for me. Okay. Once you figure out how to get businesses to put up deals and hand out the cards, a whole new world's going to open up to you guys. Because when have you ever had an army of people promote the website that you have exclusivity on, that your brand's on, and, and as they use write reviews and use the, the coupons, they got to all create accounts. So your database will truly just explode without you doing it, right? You're, you, you will leverage, when, once you start to see, once you get a couple businesses who put up deals and hand out the cards, and now they're really promoting the site, now they're driving people to it, now people are signing up in your database. You just see the names in your back end just growing without you doing anything. It's going to be like this big aha. And once you've figured out how to do it, you'll, you'll – it's just like interviews. It will become easy. You just got to figure out your style, your approach, okay? Your account manager can help you. Okay, do this. Just email your account manager. Say, hey, can you help me engage the businesses I've interviewed to get them using the site more? And they will jump on the phones. They'll get on email, and they'll make it happen because um, I've trained them how to do it. I know how to do it. Um, and once you figure it out too, okay, they can help you get Kickstarter because it's obviously a whole lot easier to do it once other people are doing it. But once you figure it, once you get that skill down, um, it'll be easy to replicate it again and again and again. And it's, and it's going to be huge, 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 huge for you guys. Okay. So, you know, what, what Cheryl talks about, right? It's typing them up takes time. Making them look good by adding pictures takes time. You know, um, it does. It takes time. And so that's a good thing because... When, like, the person you interview knows it takes you time. And you might even be able to somehow let them know. Like, it took me an hour to do this. It took me two hours to write this interview up. I wanted to make it look amazing. I wanted to add lots of pictures. Um, and time is value. Time is money. People get that. So when, like, when you're doing this, don't worry so much about the time. Just think about like I just want to add as much valuable value as possible to this person, um, and then prom and spend time to promote it because the person sees that effort and they want to reciprocate. So yes, it does it does take time, um, but if you consistently put in that time, you consistently do it. You guys will love the results, um, and then it almost becomes like like what else can I do? You know, what else can I do for this person as I'm doing this? How can I spend more time with this interview to make it even better for them? <laughs> um, you know, like it's like that, that was my thing. Like I never, I, you know, I'm, I'm always just thinking, how can I add, how can I spend more time on this relationship? You know, I'm always just, how can I spend more time in this relationship? I'm never trying to cut corners and shorten things up because I know the person understands that time. Um, yeah, farmer's market. What a, great, what a great place to go do interviews because there's so many little booths there. You just get a whole bunch done. Um. Or you set up you set up a whole bunch of appointments when you're there to meet them after for another for another time. Okay, so I got another. All right, let me open up. Okay. So some of the other features that we have written down that's going to be coming. 
Okay, so so the the coupon redemption system that's going to be on the app is going to be amazing. It's going to super easy to track for you for the businesses. Super easy to redeem through the app. Also, like think about how many um, think about how many uh, loyalty apps and loyalty programs and punch cards and digital punch cards. Buy ten, get one of this. So we're going to be creating the neighborhood loyalty card. So in every neighborhood, businesses, can, you, you can go back. There's a reason to follow up with everybody that you've interviewed. You can go back to them and say, hey, there is a new feature on Park Bench. It's called the neighborhood loyalty card where users can get it. And then it'll show them a list of businesses who say, every time you walk in and show me that you have this card, I'll give you 5% off or 10% off, or like something. So the business gets to come up with a deal that every time someone walks in with that card, which is a digital card on the app, they get a deal, right, to encourage people to shop local more. And that will be another feature that businesses get to be a part of. Um, so, so I'm really excited for that one because I know that these things have been a hit. And like in my neighborhood, businesses have been wanting a shared – loyalty card and no one's been able to do it because all the business associations chambers residents like they don't have the resources to build this technology um so so that's going to be coming with the app um what else is going to be happening Ooh, this is a big one that you guys are going to be having i know I, 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 some of you probably have asked for this this is a Heavily asked for feature. Finally, is coming. All right, website analytics. Okay, so you'll be able to log in and see how many views each of your interviews got, how many views your site got, how many people went to your site, you know, and in what time frame. So you're going to now finally see analytics in your back end. So that's not going to be coming to the app, like, like the analytics for the app, like how many downloads um, and engagement on the app, that, that will be there too. But on the desktop, when you log into your control panel on the desktop, we won't be able to show this in the app. It's too small on the phone. But on the desktop, you're going to be able to log in and see analytics. So that's going to be super exciting. Right? Offering the loyalty card to neighbors would be an excellent way to get people to subscribe to Park Bench. All right. So here's the poll I want to ask. And for all you entrepreneurial people, I know what you're going to answer here. Would you be willing and able to sell the neighborhood loyalty card? And you guys get to make money off it. Okay. So I'm thinking 10 bucks. You know, 10 bucks a card. Okay, SPC cards were 20 bucks. Okay, so this, the money would go towards, okay, so this is the poll. You guys can, you know, you get people to pay. Get the people in the community to pay for the card. The businesses don't, businesses for free. Businesses get on the card for free because they're the one offering the deal. And you guys can, get people to pay for the card. Um, so, yes. So, there's going to be one na one card per neighborhood. Okay? And it'll be 10 bucks for the neighborhood. Maybe we'll do one card per zip code in the States. You know, we got we got to flush flush that out. But the idea is, one card per neighborhood. A user can buy multiple cards, ten buck, five bucks, or ten bucks for the card for the whole year. Recurring, every year. So imagine getting money off, like, and I got other ideas of how you guys could get your sponsorship for free. So, so when you become the leader of the community, 
right? We're, we're potentially going to try and figure out, like we've offered some other, you know, so, so if I live in one neighborhood, if I work in a neighborhood, and if I ha- frequently have fun in a certain neighborhood, like I know in Toronto, like there's very well-defined neighborhoods where I work in one, where, you know, I live in one, work in another, I know the places I go and have fun in is another. So it might be worth it to me to buy three different neighborhood cards so I can get discounts in those places, or at least where I live and where I work. I spend a lot of money. Yeah, so it's not a physical card. It's on the app. So that's why it could, you know, five or 10 bucks per neighborhood. So it's a small, you know, it's a small amount of money um, for the whole year, right? But hundreds and thousands of people will buy this um and so and that and that like because if if people just get it for free then then there's no buy-in from the user so the business won't want to necessarily just put up a deal because then they're just like well then won't everybody just get all the neighborhood cards for free and then just everywhere they shop they get discounts Right, like, what's the buy-in to be like? I'm willing to pay some money. And this is why these student price cards did the same thing. I'm willing to pay some money to to consistently get deals off of these businesses. It gives it gives the the consumer has to buy in a little bit more, which makes the businesses want to offer the deals. Um, so, so yeah, may maybe. Right? Yeah. Maybe by signing up for the site and subscribing to the neighborhood, right? That's enough. Okay. Because I see that a bunch of you said, you know, no to the whole thing. So, yeah. Right? Like, so let's, let's offer this call is, is should the, the neighborhood, Loyalty card cost money. Yes or no? Because in the past, businesses, you know, have have said, like, how do people get this card? Why do they get this card? Who gets this card? So I w- I'm willing to offer a deal if I know the person's local. And if the person has to pay for it, they're only going to buy the cards that they really want. And if they buy a, a couple cards, because I live in one area, work in one area, play in another area, you know, that's reasonable. Um, but maybe not. Maybe just subscribing to the neighborhood site is the buy-in. Maybe if if I get the neighborhood newsletter, that's my buy-in. That's probably the flip side. Is it's not a money monetary buy-in. It's a commitment to receiving information about this neighborhood and that allows me to have this neighborhood loyalty card um we'll definitely have to pull the business do some more surveys around businesses before we do we officialize like this feature um but it's definitely something to see what you guys think Okay. You know, yeah, right. So, so what Connie talks about is like the 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 hardest part is to get people to buy in, right? To get people to finally start using the site. So here's the cool thing: is once businesses start adding deals and events on the site, getting users to come is dead easy. They always come. Right, users don't care what site they go to. It's just where are the deals, where are the sales, where are the specials, where are the events. So the hard part. So the, the thing is always getting the businesses to do that. Okay, so talk to your account manager. Say, hey, Grant said you could help me kickstart the engagement on the site because once businesses start looking around, they're like, oh, you're using this park bench thing. You're handing out this park bench card. You have deals on park bench. What is it? It's free. Okay, yeah, I'll do it. Right, business owners are very much like, hey. Friends do what friends do. Peers do what peers do. My neighbors do what neighbors do. Okay, so um, once you get the first few, okay, then everybody's like, yeah, sure, I'll try this out, especially if it's free. 
So you just got to get kickstarted. So talk to your account manager to get that kickstarted. Once you figure out how to do it yourself, you'll always be able to do it. Just like booking interviews, just like doing the interviews. Once you figure it out, it'll be dead easy. You won't have that challenge anymore. It's just, it's a new thing, right? Like you guys have never done this before. So, you know, um, okay. So, so it is the biggest challenge. That's why it's the biggest opportunity. That's why once it happens, you guys are going to hit the jackpot. You're going to hit the gold mine. All right. And I know this from experience. It's a gold mine. Once you figure this out, it's a gold mine to have people using your site. Okay. Because again, no one used Yelp or Yellow Pages or Groupon or Eventbrite in my area. I just became the destination. I even had more reviews than Yelp did um, in my area. More businesses were using it than, than all the sites. Once you get that, it. You just gotta, you just gotta break through. You just gotta push through, and get them engaged. And your account managers, okay, can help. Okay. I've never heard that expression. <laughs> your mouth to God's ears. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> um. I agree with Connie. You get the card if you sign up and engage. Not sign up, get the card, and then cancel. Okay, the card should be given in exchange for the email address. So yeah, so 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 that's an interesting thing is is maybe if the person, you know, maybe if the person create signs up and writes reviews, they're contributing. If you contribute to the community, you get something in return. You get this card. Okay, maybe that becomes the thing. And then if you turn off the email newsletter you don't get the card anymore. So you have to subscribe to the email newsletter. If you do, if you unsubscribe from the email newsletter, maybe you don't get the card. So maybe there isn't a monetary um, component to the, to the neighborhood loyalty card. You know, definitely something to think about. I like, I like the feedback. This is good. Okay. One of the things I'm excited about in the app is when you go to the, the homes for sale section, okay, whether or not we add listing data, you'll be able to add your properties. And when you walk around the neighborhood, you can just take photos of houses up for sale, whether that's yours or your brokerages or just someone else. You say, what a beautiful house for sale. You know, you take a photo, you write a post, you post it. And now it becomes content, right? You're, you're posting about real estate, like as you're walking around, as you're in the neighborhood. So, I'm, so that's going to be one of the things that you guys will be able to do. And then you can just make your own decision, right? You had that with HomeSnap. That's cool. You know, we should take a look at HomeSnap, see what other stuff they got going on. So that's a really good question. Everyone, everyone write in the chat box, what apps and what, what web platforms do you really like? In real estate, what what platform has a great real estate search experience? What platform has really good functionality for you guys? Um, okay, like you know, Zillow, Realtor.com, Realtor.ca. In Canada, there's Condos.ca and Property.ca. is pretty cool. The Red Pin is in Canada. You know, I don't know how big the Red Fin is in the States, if that's actually a big service that people like to use. So what real estate apps, you know, are really popular that you know that people like? What platforms, you know, um, are really popular Okay. Okay, savvy car. That's cool. Okay. WFP.com. Good search experience. Okay. Let's take a look at that one. OK, 
Okay, what other platforms? Okay, so so here's so here's here's a good um, Zillow. Okay, and Trulia, they have List Hub data, um, and because they've been around for longer, they actually have better data than what we would get. So the way List Hub works is List Hub has only 90% of all the uh, boards and MLSs. So not even all the MLSs are with List Hub. So right off the bat, we'll never get all the content. Um, we'd have to become IDX providers for those other MLSs. Then Zillow and Trulia, of all the data, when you sign up for List Hub, you get 55% of all the property data. So some brokerages say, I, I have to approve of your company before I let you have the MLS data. So 55% of the MLSs that List Hub has, which is only 90% of the whole amount, only 55% of that 90% just say, yeah, yeah, if you buy List Hub, you get the data. Then we have to apply to get more data. So Zillow and Trulia spent more time to apply. So right at the very beginning, we wouldn't have even as much as they did. We would have to work at it to get more and more and more over time. Um, but if we you know, have lots of clients who put reference letters in who are with the Rheology group, right? Real, uh, I think it's Rheology. Zillow has the data, right? So the real-time issues that you guys have, I think we would likely have the same issues. Uh, and and Realtor.com uses List Hub too. So it's it's weird that real some people think Realtor.com is good in real time, whereas Zillow updates every twenty four hours. Because that's the what I get is that um, it uploads. We would get new information every 24 hours. I, maybe it's four hours, every four hours. But if we, if, if we were as up-to-date as Zillow and Trulia, does that mean we shouldn't have the properties? Yes or no? All right, so that's something, if you have an opinion about that, that in the chat box. If we were as up-to-date and real-time as Zillow, does that mean we shouldn't have the property search? Or, you know, hey. You know, any other platforms, any other apps that you think had great features as a local consumer, as a realtor, um, please put those names in the chat box so we can go dig in and investigate so we can really build an awesome app and add some really cool features, okay, for you guys. And then we'll wrap up. And we'll call it a day. That was a great mastermind. Super engaging. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Connie. Thank you, Cheryl. Okay. Thank you, Upen. All right. Thank you, Barbara. You know, for being engaged and being here. Okay. And, and providing some good feedback. All right, Matt. You too. All right, Sharon and Pat. All right. You guys are all fantastic. Okay. And if you have any other ideas, always email support at parkbench.com. But this is really good. This is really insightful. Uh, so I appreciate you guys. This keeps you insane. 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 In a good way, right, Cheryl? Right, this keeps you this keeps you fresh, this keeps you innovative, this keeps you keeps you from not being like every other realtor. Park Bench will push you and push the boundaries to make sure you are not just like every other realtor. Okay, thank you guys.
Thank you, everybody. If you have any last comments, please put in the chat box. Uh, otherwise, you know, email support. Talk to your account manager, okay? So I think one of the things today that a bunch of you has talked about is to get your the people that you interviewed more engaged. Reach out to your account manager and push them and say, help me. Help me get the ball rolling. Help me get some businesses putting up some deals. Help me get some businesses handing out the, re handing out the review cards. Okay, help me get the ball rolling, and then I can take it from there. All right, that's what you paid for. That's what we got. That's what we can do. We've done it for other people. Okay, I've done it a ton. So, uh, so lean on your coaches because they can do more. Okay, than than you might even know. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Have yourself a great week. All right, next week will be, uh, I am totally going away from the 7th to the 21st. I'm doing Tony Robbins Business Mastery with one of the clients, Josephine Trena in Charleston, California, invited Amanda and I to Tony Robbins Business Mastery in Amsterdam. So we are going there to figure out how to blow this business up. And give you guys more value. So we will be away from the 7th to the 21st. So I got one more mastermind next week. And then we'll be breaking off for a little bit longer. Okay, so have yourself a great week. I will see you next Monday. And have fun being a local leader.